Hello and welcome to this video on 7 DevOps team anti-patterns. If you have been in our industry, you know that they don't know what to do with our teams, like DevOps teams, SRE teams, like they put a lot of names for us and also they don't know what to do with us. For example, QA team, they know what they do, where they should be. Or for example, dev team, they know what they do, they, where they should be, how the organizational structure should be. What, what they should do with DevOps teams, like, DevOps supposed to be a practice, not a team. Now, like these guys like came out of nowhere and became a team. So in this video, we are going to discuss the top seven DevOps team anti-patterns. And on the next one, we are going to demystify real good patterns of having DevOps team according to your organization situation. So let's delve into it and talk about seven DevOps team anti-patterns. For the source of this video, I have used this website along with other uh, websites and weblogs. But this website is something that I really highly suggest that you go in and read like other like blog posts in there. Plus they have a book. So if you're inclined to, you can just buy it. So anti-pattern A, that's a classic. That's the classic throw it over the wall pattern that you see. And that's actually what shaped DevOps because they wanted to kind of like ruin this pattern. But it's still in the industry, it's happening, especially when you are having two different departments, one of them doing the ops task, the other one is doing the dev task, completely different departments, completely different VPs or probably execs, and they don't want to merge. So at the end of the day, we have this structure. For the dev team, done means that feature complete but not running in the production for the ops team. Basically, they don't have that courage to come back and like give the dev, dev team the feedback about their production because at the end of the day, I have never seen these organizations really listening to the ops team. Usually like ops team is like extra headache that everybody wants to go away from. So that's anti-pattern type A and don't do that. Okay, DevOps type B, that's a classic too. So in the previous organization, probably one exec came in and said that, you know what, we need one, some of these like DevOps thing to basically just put it in there and have a modern organization. So they kind of invented this DevOps team. DevOps team, they just form it, they hire some people in there and very quickly DevOps team become a silo by itself, so now they should deal with three silos. Wow, nobody wants to deal with something like that. Still, done means uh, feature complete, but not working in the production. And uh, I can say that this kind of team structure is good if it's something like is uh, transitory. So maybe 12 months to 18 months, if you want to go for some of those good patterns of DevOps, maybe you can have this DevOps team in here because for first step, it's good but for something that is there forever. Anti-pattern C, and that is DevOps, they don't even need ops. And they are like, okay, we can do it ourselves. You can see this structure usually in the startups and in the small companies, but usually mature companies that they have enough money, they don't like to have something like this. But for some companies that kind of like the managers or sometimes the uh, developers, they are arrogant and they don't know much about like dev and ops and how the things work in the industry. So they are saying that, yeah, why not doing it ourselves? So that's how they are going to form this structure. And they are completely saying that we don't need ops at all. And then they go in and create a DevOps team, maybe one member or two members just inside the dev team. This structure is not going to help a lot because at the end of the day, ops, ops task is going to be like, be so big that at the end of the day, probably developers will find out they are pa like putting about like 30% of their time or 40% of their time on operations. So they don't like that one. And at the end of the day, usually ops task will be deprioritized. So at the end of the day, it's not going to be good operations at all. Anti-pattern D and that is DevOps as a tool team. This kind of like a structure gives some benefits to the users or the companies, but still it's kind of like neglecting the involvement of the ops at the beginning of development of a feature or microservice. But at the end of the day, still they have this DevOps so that it can help, like DevOps team can help in building up the structure, probably monitoring, probably some kind of tooling, uh, CI, CD and all those things. So still there's some benefit that can be gained from this structure, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be the full benefit that is involving the ops team from the beginning of the uh, kind of development of the application. Anti-type E, 
and that is rebranding the CSAT means actually that's completely accurate and many people in the current like companies they are doing almost the same thing I was reading a reddit post the other day and it was like talking about what is SRE like somebody asked that question and I was seeking inside the answers they were like somebody that's saying that actually that's a modern CSAT means and I was like no it's not it's like completely different thing but it seems that many companies they believe that DevOps is a CSAT means so they make like kind of rebrand somebody in the ops team and say that yeah why not you come in here and form a team and we call you devops and probably like you can just go in and create the things how you can find this red flag it's like when you see the job description of a devops and they're focusing on automation actually many times i was just invited to interviews and in there i was just talking about devops is different from automation we implement systems we implement practices but they were like, no, we just need automation. I was like, okay. So that's not a good thing. And if you see such a red flag, maybe it's a good for the first of your career, but I wouldn't suggest it at all. Just go out of there after first year. The other structure that is happening that is ops embedded in the dev team. Actually, dev team will have DevOps, ops, and the dev itself. So again, like this thing is happening in the startups, especially startups they, that they want to hire some heroes, like people that they know everything. Usually happens something like this, that hero is going to put about 12 hours per day, just writing code, maintaining the infrastructure, and even like develop the tooling. That will not work. But again, like that happens, like this is like in organizations with low maturity of the technical systems, and they don't want to just keep separate ops team because they don't believe in ops although like devops doing something else and devops are not sys admins but also we, we need ops in our organizations because we need those guys to and their kind of background and their expertise to kind of keep the systems up they are completely separate systems and separate teams so we need to have ops team as a separate kind of organizational structure and here we can have like we can see that development team they are going to kind of take care of monitoring again and even like uh, running the code in production what happens next again like the issue that it was happening before still ops team will face like resource constraint or it's better to say that like there, there will be no ops at all and anti-type g dev and dba silos well I consider this one even like a step forward compared to the first one on the pattern that we didn't have DBAs at all because when you are having DBAs at least you are having better uptime but from the other hand still you are not involving DBAs and ops team at the beginning of the at the beginning of the life cycle of the application still we don't need that one we don't like that one we need them to be involved at the beginning and they are not, they don't have any devops team so still like we don't have that people that they are kind of taking care of that devops practices there is something else in there usually dbas they don't like change and when you're having them in the ops team at the end of the development dbas would come in and say that no i don't want that change we cannot implement it and then it can stretch the dev life cycle that's something that we don't want that's a roadblock so that's the thing with the anti-type G. We don't like DBAs to be in the ops team. We want everybody to be involved in some way. So that's it. That's the final anti-pattern of DevOps teams. And like in the next week, we are going to talk about like what are the legit patterns of the DevOps teams and how we can implement them. If you're interested, I have a talk in 6th of July at DevOps Days Toronto. And I'm going to talk about platform teams. That's basically the latest and modern development in the DevOps team, the structure. If you're interested, please sign up. I'm going to put the link in the description. Thank you and have a great day. By the way, please remember to subscribe. Uh, I try to put good videos in there. So if you like it, please do subscribe. Thank you.